Here we are in 2019, when we were supposed to have flying cars, jetpacks, and instant growth pills to help me feel less inadequate. Except this is the real world, and we only got one of those things, and the other two were instead traded for a PG-13 discount Saw movie. Escape Room stars the chick Daredevil wants to bang, Dale without Tucker, and no one else of any significance. Our cast of characters are all given a gift, a puzzle box, by their boss, professor, dominatrix, whatever, and upon solving the simple puzzle box, which I had thought was going to summon Pinhead and the Cenobites, instead give gives them a small invitation slip that offers them $10,000 if they beat their escape room. For those of you who don't know, escape rooms are a series of puzzles and riddles in a room where you or a group of people pay to try and solve them and escape to win like you're trying to play Legend of Zelda in real life, but without the monsters, triangles, and a princess that blue balls you as a reward. Though the premise is interesting, 2019 is off to a misstep. Escape room's first real problem is that the characters are about as attractive to us as lying in bed and staring up at the ceiling until you finally fall asleep six hours later than you should have. The cast consists of the usual variety of people, timid, failure, douche, loser, redneck, and the wounded warrior, being thrust into a situation where their lives are very much on the line, like that split-second decision you have to make where you either take the punishment equally, or you could throw your sibling under the bus and run away to get out of the splash zone. Few of the characters have any sort of development, hardly growing as the danger rises, and less so their backstories giving any true revelations, because they clearly weren't given the exact same high-quality puzzle box for any other reason. Each room feels like it was plucked straight from a video game. Literally, the rooms were Fire, Ice, Gravity, Call of Duty Zombies, Tim Burton on Acid, Nancy Drew, and Dead by Daylight. This was like watching a clunky speed run of gaming's greatest hits. The Tim Burton room wasn't exactly pleasant either, with the floor spinning, TV set to the static channel, and the epilepsy-inducing lights flashing so fast that I half expected the audience behind me to become reactivated Russian sleeper agents. Though the cabin room was quite cozy, none of the rooms really tried to do anything impressive, unlike the Gravity Room, which was aesthetically and structurally intriguing with the room being upside down and perfectly still like it was designed for someone who could do parkour. The two biggest problems with the movie have to be, one, the foundational reason for it to exist, which is to create a franchise rather than a satisfying experience, and two, the ending which is so over the top and dumb that I was actually getting Star Trek Into Darkness flashbacks. See, a movie like any piece of media should be a great time, no alcohol required. It should be satisfying as a single well-told story, even if it is a piece of the larger sum, like a slice of French silk pie. Instead, what we got here was the crust piece of the pizza. The good parts are there, but they ran out of ideas to finish the movie off with without leaving a bland taste. Instead, the ending is left open to the idea that the survivors are going after the implausibly powerful and technologically super advanced group, and we're supposed to believe that they will defeat them, like Alice Jones is going to expose Mark Zuckerberg for the lizard person overlord that he is? Because with how he drinks water and spoke to Congress, he may very well be. Overall, I don't approve of it. If you want the same experience, go home, rub one out, all the while trying to solve a Sudoku puzzle that only has one number to start.